the network down on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy so we're saying that uh, the network down on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy uh, that is 5.1 we stayed in the work energy theorem in words and then let's move to 5.2 so 5.2 here is saying that uh, let's give a reason why the network down on the track while moving on the rs tab bed is negative so let's go ahead and read through our statement here so that we can have a better idea of uh, what is going on right so we have a driver of a 30,000 kg truck driving down a steep road onto an ascending rs tab bed inclining 28 degrees to the horizontal as we can clearly see before right and then uh, apparently the brakes of the truck they fail right and then at point a at the beginning of the rs tab bed uh, we have a speed of 33 meters per second and then the average frictional force on the track is steady 1000 newtons while the track moves up the alistair bed right so back to equation equation is saying right let's give a reason why the network done on the track while moving on the alistair bed is negative so let's have a free body diagram so that we can you know see what is happening with clarity so when the track is moving up the incline uh, we have fg which is uh, pulling it down obviously uh, which we can resolve to fg perpendicular and then fg uh, parallel but then we are told that there's a frictional force right so let's have a frictional force uh, somewhere here and then if you can if you want you know we can put a normal force there so these are the forces that are acting on our track while it is moving up the incline but then as it is moving up the incline you can see clearly that frictional force and fg parallel are opposing the motion right so we have our f net uh, being equals to uh, the frictional force plus fg parallel right that's parallel the incline and then uh, as you can see the f net is pointing down but then the track is going up so it is easy to see here that uh, the displacement is opposite f net right there's an angle of 180 degrees between the two and as a result the work net is negative right because uh, there's an angle of 180 degrees between f net and delta x right uh, let's move to 5.3 if uh, there's any need for clarity you're gonna let me know in the comments uh, so 5.3 is saying that let's use energy principles to conclude the minimum length of the arista bed needed to bring the truck to a stop so uh, I've you know went through a couple of questions just to see the trend right so what the question says let's use energy principles there's only two equations we can use we can use uh work net is equal to the change in ek or we can use uh the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to the change in ek plus the change in ep right so one between these two formulas should work right i'm going to use uh, the first formula and then i want you guys to use the second formula and see if we're going to get the same answer at the end so let me go ahead and preach that gospel so that we can see what is happening right so we have f net right uh, we are looking for delta x and then what do we have we have vi because we know that at point a uh, at the beginning of our rest of bed we have a velocity of uh, 33 uh, meters per second and then if the track is coming to a stop then vf needs to be equal to zero right so uh, let's look at the formulas we have because the formulas that we have will decide how we are supposed to set up our equation right uh, so we are going to use working it as a cost to the change in ek right but then another way of finding work net is using f net right so we can equate those two equations what do i mean let me let me show you what i'm talking about so we can say that um so we know that we're saying that work net is a cost to uh, the change in ek right but then here in place of work net we can put f net 
uh, multiply by delta x multiply by cos of theta is equals to a half m v f squared minus v i squared right so this is how we're going to set up our equation so if we go ahead and uh, compute that uh, so let's find f net first so f net will be equals to fg parallel plus uh, frictional force right uh, parallel the incline we've already established that in uh, 5.2 so if we uh, go ahead and compute that. Uh, let's see uh, what we're gonna have, right? So we're gonna have Fg parallel. Uh, that will be thirty uh, thousand kgs multiplied by nine comma eight multiplied by sine of twenty eight degrees. Uh, let's not forget that uh, when you wanna find Fg parallel, you take sine of the angle, and then uh, the frictional force. It is said to be uh, thirty one thousand uh, newtons right uh, that's uh, what we're given there in uh, our equations essentially and if we compute that uh, we're gonna get uh, 169 point uh, actually not 169 point but just 169 Oh, two, four point six four newtons. So one hundred and sixty-nine thousand uh, twenty-four point six four newtons. And then now that we have F net, we can substitute it back into our equation, right? Uh, so we're gonna have uh, in place of F net, we have one six nine oh two four point six four multiplied by delta x let's not forget delta x is what we're interested in right and then multiply by cos of 180 degrees why are we saying cos of 180 degrees we've already established that right uh, we have seen from a free body diagram that f net is opposite at uh, the direction of uh, the motion or the displacement so to say uh, so this should all be equals to so for the sake of space let me just write it here that will be equals to a half and then the mass is 30 uh, thousand vf is zero squared and then minus 33 uh, squared right so now uh, we are done with the physics essentially uh, we just need to solve the math right yeah so what you really need to learn here is uh setting up these equations yeah because that's the difficult thing as soon as uh you have your equations set up um everything becomes easy so on the left hand side uh cos of 180 will be minus one right so we're just going to have minus one six nine oh two four point six four delta x uh being equals to so on the uh, right hand side we have minus one six three three five uh, zero 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 so it is easy to see here that uh, we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of uh, delta x right and then uh, if we go ahead and do that we're gonna get uh, delta x uh, being equals to 96.64 meters right so that is our answer to 5.3 uh, now let's do uh, 5.4 uh, so 5.4 is saying that uh, the diagram below shows the same truck entering and descending at a bed inclined at 28 degrees to the horizontal the initial speed of the truck and the average frictional force of the truck are 33 meters per second and 31,000 newtons respectively right and then the question is saying which are the bed ascending or descending will be able to stop the truck in a shorter distance explain the answer in terms of the forces acting on the truck so before we do all that common sense it's easy to see that when the truck is ascending it will take a shorter distance to stop compared to when the truck is descending right but then uh, let's show how that is true so our answer here uh, we're speculating uh, that it is uh, ascending right yeah when the truck is ascending it will take a shorter distance but why is that the case that's what we now need to do so when the truck is ascending so let's say f a uh, for um ascending so let's say f net a yeah because we want uh, the net force when the truck is ascending 
we're gonna have um we've already done this in 5.2 right uh, we have fg parallel plus frictional force so this fnet is the force putting the truck to the stop when the track is ascending right we have f uh, we have fg parallel plus frictional force now let's look at what happens when the track is descending so now we have f net uh b right let me just uh, draw a free body diagram real quick to show you what is going to be happening so the track is going down um frictional force is opposing the motion and fg parallel is pushing the track down right so f net is going to be equals to uh, fg parallel minus frictional force so it is easy to see here uh, that uh, the f net when the track is ascending is greater than the f net when the track is uh, descending right so this was a possibility so because of that it will take a shorter distance uh, for the track to come to a stop when it is ascending uh, versus when it is uh, descending